Hello everyone and welcome back to Kenny Conversation brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to JEGS.com for everything you need for your hot rods. As Rusty says, to fix your hot rod up. Everybody wanted to know more about these trophies. So we talked about the 1998 Bud Shootout. They know all about that, but they saw this big, beautiful trophy here, the 1989 Winston. So let's talk about this race. All right. I think it's going to take about eight or 10 minutes to talk about this. So we're, we're in the late stages of the Winston, and you see Daryl Waltrip up there, and you're driving the crap out of your, uh, your Kodiak Pontiac. What are you thinking as you're, you're catching him? Well, I'm gonna back up just a second. Yeah, yeah. We started the race and that car I had was so fast, it was unreal. So we just jetted out and won the first stage. Okay. All right, came down, put four tires in the car, went out for the second stage, there was three stages. Yeah. Went out for the second stage and all of a sudden the car is just really loose, really bad loose, I'm holding on to it. Daryl gets past me, he wins the second stage. I come down pit road, <clears throat> they changed tires, uh, for the final stage, Barry Dots, my crew chief, comes across the radio and says, Rusty, we, we figured the problem out, so what happened? Man, you're not going to believe this. We accidentally got the right rear tire on the right front and the right front on the right rear. Oh, my gosh. And there was a half an inch difference in tire stagger, meaning that, I'll never forget the numbers. Mm -hmm. We were running an 88 and a half inch diameter right front tire and an 88 right rear. Okay, hold on. Remember this. Everybody's mm -hmm. amazed by Mark Martin rattling off his chassis numbers from his ASA days. How The fans are gonna to wanna to know right now, how do you remember that? It's You've got to know it to be successful. I know you and I fought yeah. about it. We've yeah. had a lot of people fought about it. Let's put it this way. That's the only way I knew how to do it. Yeah. I had to control my own destiny. I had to understand every setup on my car. I had to know the, the, the compression, the rebound on my shocks. I had to know the air pressures. I had to know the, the, the tire stagger. Mm. And that's just the way it was. So in night, 1989, so many years ago, you still remember the circumference of the tires. Okay, go ahead. I, I did my best. He, you, you don't remember last week, but he remembers 1989, the size of the tires. <laughs> so you awesome. start to race the cars. We practice the car. It's all set. It's got uh, an 88 and a half inch right front tire on it. It's got an 88 inch right rear tire on it. And so it would have had an 87 left rear and would have had an 87 left front hmm. diameter, okay? Yeah. And that's the way the, the tire, the car loved to be. So we won the first segment hmm. in a big manner, just drove off. Second segment, the car's just loose. I'm like, this is weird. It just doesn't happen that bad. All right, Barry Dotson comes across after the second segment. He says, we found a problem. We've accidentally put the right rear in the right front, meaning we had a big right rear tire in the car, which made it super loose. All right, so now the last segment, we get the car right. We get the tires back right. Daryl takes off. He jets out. He jets out, and I'm like, man, this hot rod of mine is back to normal now. It's really feeling good. So I run him down, get into turn three, and I got right to his bumper, and so I said I didn't get the job done. So now we're getting down like five laps to go, okay? Because I think it was only like a 10-lap run or something. Quarter of a million dollars to win? Quarter of a million. Daryl says, I hope you're choking that two. <laughs> That's later. <laughs> he says, I hope, hope you're choking that 200, but it was 250. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, so anyway, all 50. <laughs> la you know, three or four laps to go. I sail that baby down the back straight. And this thing is handling like a real hot rod, you know. And I, I sail it down into turn three. I never did less of screw it. I'm not lifting. I held it wide open and went in this long drift. And I got right to his left rear quarter panel. And just barely touched him. And I thought maybe he'd wiggle a little bit, but he ended up spinning out. Anyway, I went on to win the race. The craziest thing was, is that my great friend, Rick Hendrick, owned the team that Kenny Schrader was driving. Mm. And the boys put a phone call into Kenny Schrader and said, hey, he was running second at the time, Kenny was, on the restart of this race. So you spin Daryl out, caution comes out, now they're gonna restart the race. Yeah, and Kenny's running second. He gets a phone call from his boys, Hey, rough old Rusty up a little bit. Yeah. He pulls up alongside me, and I looked over him like this. I said, don't even think about it. Because <laughs> we grew up with Kenny Schrader in St. Louis, yeah, so I homies. Said, I said, 
I could read your mind. I said, don't Sign even, language. I said, don't even think about it. They dropped the hammer and I was gone. And then a hot rod just checked out and I won to Winston. Got the 250 grand and all hell broke loose. The whole damn infield was in a fight. Everybody's screaming and hollering. When it was all said and done, I'm in Victory Lane. I, after Victory Lane was over, they put me in an ambulance because they thought they were gonna kill me, the fans were. They were so mad at me. They put me in an ambulance, snuck me out, took me up to the top of the Speedway Tower for this presentation. I walked in there and everybody booed me. Everybody. No. Boo, boo. It was the most humiliating thing in the world. They put me back in the ambulance and- I didn't know this. And drove me to my house in Concord. I went to bed that night. They took two police officers, stationed them in my bedroom that night at my house, downstairs in the living room. My daughter, Katie, gets up in the middle of the night. She walks out of her room and she sees two police officers there. She comes flying upstairs. She goes, mom and dad, mom and dad. There's, there's, and the Katie's only like four or five years old. Yeah. Mom and dad, mom and dad, there's police officers. What's going on? I said, I looked at her, so well, Katie, it was a long night. It's a long story, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> wow. So And so they I mean yeah. the fans were gonna kill me. They were so mad at me, it's unreal. I wanna stay about this race. First of all, that's unbelievable. Uh, and a lot of people think to themselves, you know, why are people so passionate about it? But I wanna go to uh, you out running and, and straighten the story out. We're still talking about this race, but you told me a story where Fans threatened to kill you when you and Dale Earnhardt were going at it. That happened in Atlanta where some fan looked at you saying, I'm going to kill you, Rusty Wallace. You've been roughed up before. Oh, that, you know, Kenny, that happens to a lot of people where they they got a favorite driver and you know, they got the competition going on and all hell breaks loose. That happens. Uh, the biggest thing I had happened to me in my life was the Darrell Walter thing in the yeah. All-Star Race, which I got this trophy right here yeah. for. That's the bad one. That was a tough one, but I will tell you right now, before we go much farther, Daryl Walter and I are some of the best friends. I love that dude. He's one of the coolest men on the whole planet, you know, and him and I are both in the Hall of Fame together. And that's nice. That's what happens when you get in the Hall of Fame. You take all the past memories of all those competitions, you can remember them, but the competition stops. Yeah. And we start respecting each other's career. Yeah. And that's what the Hall of Fame does for us. And Daryl and I are super tight. We're great friends. And Daryl and I, but switching gears on you a little bit now, you you talked about Dale Senior. Yeah. So Dale Senior, you know, obviously a very popular guy, and there there's no doubt, man. On the short tracks, I was winning them races. On the big tracks, he was winning the races. We go to Charlotte, I'd win the Coke Six Hundred, I'd win Michigan, I'd win, you know, those intermediates a little bit, and we were back and forth, and we were big buddies. People didn't know that, man. We're racing like hell, and we we vacationed a lot. Mm -hmm. Hell, we would go down to Bahamas. My wife Patty his wife, Teresa, and all of us, and the NASCAR boys, and we have a great old time down there. And we're wonderful friends. Always have been to the day he died. Mm -hmm. And then we get on the racetrack, and he'd work for his team and do his deal, and I'd work for my team, and I'd do my deal, and he'd race back and forth, and that's it. The fans were going crazy up and down. But I drove my car as hard as I could drive it. He drove his as hard as, hard as he could drive it. Mm -hmm. and, and I won my fair share, you know, from, let's, let's call it 93, to 2005, to the day I quit, you know? But 93 to 2000, it was magical years, man. It was, we were doing some crazy things that were amazing. 93, I won 10 races. 94, we switched from Pontiac to Ford, I won eight races. And the career just kept going. And every time I would win, Earnhardt was second. And every time Earnhardt would win, I was second. Mm -hmm. It was just like that back and forth, you know? It just wouldn't stop. It was amazing. It was do, really good. Do, do you think uh, that that was the rivalry that NASCAR needed? Because right now, I understand that you don't race anymore, and I understand that you're in the Hall of Fame and you're retired, and you got all your, in, in a fun way, all your, all your competitors now are your friends. But back then, it was looked at as a rivalry. We don't, I don't know if we have any rivalries anymore like you guys had. Did, did you know at that time that you were a great race car driver, number one, knew your chassis, that was number one, but you also had to know that you were, you and Earnhardt were a show. Well, that's a good question. We've done some real crazy things when it comes to the show. I can only remember like two times that we actually did a show deal on the racetrack. But look, 
you know, I, whether I was winning Bristol, I, when it was all sudden now my career was done, I had nine wins at Bristol, you know, and Earnhardt was always rattling me all the time. Man, help me with that setup. Help me with those setups. And you know what? I, you're not going to believe this. I was on a boat one time in the Bahamas. He said, look, man, um, and I, I, in that particular year, I was not hung for the championship, and he was. Mm. Come on, man, help me with that setup. Help me with that setup. Do you know I gave him the exact setup, the real setup, right to the team? And you, and you know why I wasn't concerned? Why? You're not going to believe this one. Uh, the reason I knew I was not concerned is I knew that he could not sell it to his team. Oh, wow. Yeah. I knew the team would look at this and say, Rusty's bullshitting you. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't lie. Yeah. I gave him that entire setup. Right. And I looked at him. I said, what you got in the car? Before the race started, he said, this, 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 this. And when it was all said and done, you know what he did? What? He used 70% of that setup I gave him. Mm. And you know what happened? I waxed his ass. Yeah. I beat his ass that night so bad. You know why? Because he, he didn't do what I told him. Yeah, he didn't do the whole thing. He well, you, all, whole thing. you always said that to me back in the ASA days. You, you had mentors. You had Larry Phillips. You had Dick Triple. And you did everything they told you to do. And then when you went to pay it forward, no... Do you find that, like, either when, when you're first starting out, they don't believe you, and then when you get to the big time, then he, Earnhardt, could, like you said, he goes to Richard Childress, hey, put this in, because Rusty told me. Do you think they thought you were lying, or they just their pride got in the way? Do you think people's pride gets in the way? No, I don't think the pride got in the way of the driver. I think the pride got in the way of the team. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because the driver didn't, it was in trouble. He couldn't get the car to handle the way it was. So he went outside to get some help. Right. I went outside to get some help from Mark Martin all the time. I went outside to get some help from Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton went outside to get some help from me. Mark Martin got some help from me. We told each other exactly the truth. Yeah. To the truth. And what was amazing that I always knew what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. You can't run this thing by yourself, man. It takes a team or it takes friends yeah. to do this stuff. And there might be one day I'm in the ditch and they, and I need some help. There's a lot of times they're in a ditch and they need some help. Yeah. And we did that. And I tell you what, I got in a bunch of crap with our two car team at Team Penske. I mm -hmm. mean, those guys, the other guys, the other team, I mean, they were really locked down, super secret, yeah. everything, you know? And I didn't believe in that, man. I didn't yeah. believe in that. And, uh, I share, I'm sorry, I share a lot, but you know what? It worked out for me. Yeah. And it worked out for me really good, and that's the way I, I live my life. And I'm an honest guy. I tell those guys everything. And I could, I could sit there and say, tell them the truth. But I know in my heart. But <laughs> they're not going to listen. <laughs> they're not going to lose 70%, 80% because they think I'm bullshit. I'm not, I'm not, you know? Yeah. So we won't keep this one long because people like short stories. Uh, We've been talking for 20 minutes. Yeah, well, believe me, when you all get to about the <laughs> four-minute mark, you start going like this. But this is so good, I know you'll listen to the whole thing. So that 1989 All-Star Race, you win it, you yeah. win, win $250,000. Do you think it, in 1989, was that, that, uh, was that the most money you ever won? Or oh, my gosh, yeah. Back then, that was huge money. That was gigantic. I mean, yeah. we had me and Barry Dotson, Harold Elliott, Jimmy Maycar, we had Todd Parrott, we had the all-star car owner, yeah. uh, Raymond Beadle. You big, won a championship this year. Yeah, too, right? big you, world time drag race. We won the championship in 1989. So you win, you win the, the all-star race in 89. Yeah. You win the championship in 89. Was that your best year ever? Well, no. e Eagle-wise? No. Ego? Like championship yeah. all-star. Well, winning the championship's your best year ever. Yeah. My best year ever was driving for Team Penske. Yeah. When I won 10 races, and yeah. I won a third of all NASCAR races. Yeah. A third yeah. of all the NASCAR races. Yeah, and, and we got more stories. It we'll, broke my wrist in 1993. Yeah. I got a pin in it right now, still to this day. Talladega. You got a Tell, pin still? Yeah, it's a foot long. It starts right here and goes right here. How do you go through uh, inspection at the airport? It's all cal 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 calcified over, and it, oh. and it doesn't set the, the, oh, the detectors off, you know. So yeah. anyway, yeah. No, I, I did 93, 10 races, man. You kidding me? I mean, championship was fantastic. I got a six wins that year in 1989. Yeah. But to win 10 races with yeah. Buddy with Buddy Parrott at the helm and Team Penske just rock and roll with that black and yellow uh, Miller Janium Jeff car, my favorite car. What was your called, favorite uh, design? What, what was your favorite design? So we're gonna do more of these 
We're done with this story, the all-star race. Of course, Rusty's best year, 89, as far as winning it all. We're gonna do more stories. The next one up is when you ran how fast in a tire test at Talladega. We're not gonna talk about it. That's the next show. We're gonna tease you. AT&T, Altel, had you do the tire test at Talladega? Next though. Okay, that's next. How many miles an hour? 242. That's next. 242 mile an hour at Talladega. Until then, remember, we are in podcast form. You're going to listen to Rusty on the way to work, and you're going to listen to him on the way home. Until the next show.